when they're over there. No, you don't. And, like, oh, the, the strong backers. I mean, Palutena, like we were saying, right, she's fantastic. And this is, I'd, I'd argue, one of the better maps for her, right? She can ladder, she can ladder off of the combo, uh, ladder off of the side platforms oh, there. And, no. oh, no, the short hop there with Liam taking game one. I do apologize to everybody there. We did have some technical difficulties, but I'm trying to hope that we have resolved it now. Yeah, oh, my God. I, as a player, I'll admit, I very rarely think about footstooling my opponent. That's not like an option in my head. And just seeing Phantom like instantly recognize I can footstool Julius here and he'll probably die for it was just, that was incredible. Yeah, that was an extremely satisfying play to be seen there. And oh, uh, yeah. hopefully now everything should be resolved and we'll be going mm -hmm. into the next game. Now, have we got confirmation on... Who is Liam and who is Julius, or who is Phantom and who is Julius in this situation? Uh, it looks like, yeah, we were right. Phantom, Phantom is, is uh, playing Palutena right. as Liam, okay. and Julius is uh, Jimber J uh, on the young link that game. Right, wonderful. So you mentioned Town and City being good for Palutena. Uh, funny enough, it's actually not one of her best stages. Palutena really likes having small blast zones because her one weakness is that she doesn't have that explosive kill power she really needs to get her opponents to 120 130 and then she kind of turns online like anything she does at that point will kill but she doesn't have those early killing options so you want the smaller closer stages where you don't have to work as hard to get the kill and town and city of course known for having a very very high blast zone in this game makes it really difficult to get those up airs to start feeling that powerful. Yeah, and I guess giving them the space now to... Yeah, I mean, like you said, getting the up airs mm -hmm. and everything and making that work. And going into game two, I'm curious to... Oh, we do see a costume oh, switch. Especially Young Link. And a... Uh, no, this oh, is no, a different he, character. He's, oh, this no, he's Young Link character. now, isn't he? Dude, it has been it's, a uh... hot minute, but... Yeah, you are. Young Link's about as close as you can get to being an Echo Fighter without really calling it an Echo Fighter. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely a different character. All right, well, and now being able to come into it, we should be seeing. Oh, a oh, bit of a. Maybe not. Looks are like they... we're going to. Oh, swap the map stages, didn't switch. I think. Somebody forgot to change the map, yeah. so they are very quickly resetting that back over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Young Link, definitely a character with more combo potential. He has a lot more self defense tools than Toon Link does. Um, his projectiles are a lot more combo oriented it's not about walling out your opponent with bombs and arrows it's about getting that arrow that leads to the forward airs that lead to the up air right yeah um i mean so, it's, it's, it's all about finding those connections isn't it you're just like yeah exactly it's almost like it's the point so, of the game gerbil yeah it is but they, they got different play styles they do. Toon link wants to throw projectiles to keep you out and then he wants to rock a percent and find that one move that'll kill you. Yeah. But Young Link wants to throw projectiles to like, it's almost like a Falco laser in a way. Uh, how a Toon Link uses his bow. It like, it puts you in that little bit of stun that lets him get in and start his like melee combo on you. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, the Young Link's melee combo is... Uh... Oh, sorry, Toon Link's melee uh, combo is not exactly we go, we're back to Toon Link, I guess, so maybe I... Uh, okay, maybe well, I'm we're, just, we're all over the place, maybe... We're at a... Yeah, we're at the Lila transformation of battlefield. Oh, we are. Yeah, we are in Lila battlefield mm -hmm. now, which is... I don't really see people picking, what, what are they called, alpha transformations that often? Oh, the or... Omega ones? Yeah, no, Omega's final destination. I think alpha, right, is battlefield? I'm pretty sure they're just referred to as battlefield stages. Are they really? I that's, believe so. That's a missed opportunity by Nintendo. Yeah, well, that's... How cool does Alpha stage sound? I then? mean, for everybody calls in Battlefield, and getting into this, we do see wow, Phantom see, uh, here getting a percentage lead. Seven from yeah, Phantom? Yeah, I mean, oh, that was... All right, okay. Phantom looking to try and make something connect there. Maybe looking for another stool, but not going to be able to find it. A nice side B coming out there. And Palutena's side B is interesting because if you call it midair, she almost... She can still move, can't she? Uh, you can't move, but you maintain the drift you already have. That's, yeah. So you, can't, you can't change direction, but you keep moving if you were already moving. Yeah, yeah. and in carrying that momentum lets you reposition yourself mm -hmm. to set up some really, really cool things with Palutena. And I think that's something that took people a while to figure out. That back throw is, in fact, going to it's kill Julius. Strong. Yeah, I mean, 
That was a lot of percentage. Oh, that was things there. Uh, the booster pass was for really clever then. And we see that for the next year, Jim is almost such a hard time to get in opposed to last game. You just, oh, is he dead? He knows he can make the back of the stage. Oh, thank you for the low recovery but... Jeff That's will have in some connection issues there as he has gone robotic. But no, oh, I, no. I think I think we can figure out, yeah, you, you've thought for a second there that Phantom was going to die. We managed to get the recovery. As we do see Julius looking to try and find an opening in this situation, throwing out those boomerangs. He's trying to get those projectiles out. But we see Palutena Phantom playing very much the similar game, just using that neutral B, trying to keep him zoned out as well, punish him for any wind up animations. As we do see Phantom getting another stock on to Julius there. Oh, a bit of a miss. Oh, but he does swag. hit the recovery there. Oh, that is him swagging a little too hard, almost dying for it, but he is able to make it back in a really solid leap for him. I really can't blame him for going for those cool platform camp cancels. Yeah, Julius hitting a nice bomb there, trying to completely edge guard out Phantom there, but un some, unfortunately for him, unsuccessful here, as a lot of shield damage does mm. come out. Yeah, a lot of shield damage. This game looks so different from the first game. It really feels like Phantom kind of figured everything out. Uh, yeah. The first game was something that, like, it, it could have been close. You could have seen it being close. Oh, oh the attack my did. goodness. He hit that attack in the first game, too. On Wi-Fi, especially. That's so hard. Into the back. So it doesn't kill this time around, though. But did he miss? Oh, no. He does manage to get the ledge there. And, I mean, it's it's okay. Well, in this situation, you, you never want to be Julius. Hey. There it is. Oh, Phantom's doing say, that so many times. And I mean, it's just, you can tell, I think Julius knew it was coming. But yeah. He just misspaced a little bit. So the idea was definitely there. But oh God, on Wi Fi, you can just have those execution problems sometimes. Yeah, it happens sometimes. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work out. And I'm curious now do we see the character switch? Do we see. Oh, wait, no. It's a. Uh, best that was it's best three, three, yeah. wasn't it? That one's. Yeah. yeah. Best well, we asked if they wanted to play a game three. It's up to them. Uh, but congratulations to Phantom winning three convincingly. Game one started out a little rough, but he figured it out. And from there, it was just, it was kind of a blowout. Yeah, unfortunately, that first game, we did have some technical issues, but thankfully we managed yeah. to get it solved fairly quickly. And we've got, we've got a good season lined up this time around, mm -hmm. Gerbil. Yeah, like, definitely. I feel like, most seasons are like lined up well, but like I'm excited from from Overwatch to Rocket League to even like mm -hmm. Smash. I mean, yeah, we got... we're using the new Swiss bracket format, right? So we're yeah. gonna get like higher quality games as time goes on, right? Yes. Because in the last time, everyone was just sort of pre match So we saw a lot of games that ended up being kind of one sided as somebody sort of like tore through their bracket. But now we have the Swiss ranking, so people are going to get matched based on how many times they've won or lost. So that should mean as time goes on, we're going to be able to get more good player versus good player games on stream. And it should really, uh, really give some great matches to look at. Yeah, so as the season goes on, we will see these matches getting closer and closer. Unfortunately, today, we did see Phantom completely blow through Julius. But Julius might run it back, you know? You, you never know how oh, these yeah. things go with the Swiss bracket. So definitely uh, room for practice. None of these players are like so far above each other that it's impossible. It's really just about how much time you want to put into improving. Yeah, a hundred percent. So although this was a fairly short stream, considering how quick of uh, those matches went, we of course mm -hmm. would like to thank you all for tuning in. And I mean, I'm I'm excited to be back. Like I keep saying, you know. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, I mean, it's only week two. It's the second week of EGFH for mm -hmm. 2019 with, once again, Phantom from Lud the Ludlow Falcons taking the victory. And as always, you can follow us at Officially GF on Twitter and Twitch for updates and announcements. I'd once again like to thank our absolutely fantastic sponsors for making this season possible, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club. I have been Kevin Navik Dignan. You can find me on Twitter at NavikCasts. And I've been uh, Matthew Toxic Gerbil Merrick. You can find me on Twitter at Toxic underscore Gerbil. And you can see both of our tags down in the bottom left now with our new interface, Ooh, which is fancy. very, very nice looking. Thank you all once again, and we will see you tomorrow for Rocket League.